So, I'm sure a load of you guys have already read lots of newspaper articles or online magazine articles referring to this report, this article written by Ulla Moilanen et al. about a Viking Age grave in Swantaka in Finland. And again, apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly. And one of the main features of this inhumation, this grave, is the fact that the skeleton seems to have been buried wearing women's clothing. We have two tortoise brooches placed sort of top of the torso, uh, which usually suggests that this person is wearing an apron dress, or a hangarok, or whatever you want to call it. The big problem with this grave that everybody has latched onto is, oh my god, but this woman was buried with a sward! Uh, and there's another sward above the grave in a more recent layer. So, what is this woman doing buried with a sword? Was this a female Viking warrior? Is this a legendary shield maiden? Moilanen et al. have now proven fairly convincingly, using a tiny amount of um, <laughs> material available, it's very impressive what they can do, um, that this person almost certainly had Kleinfelter syndrome. So what is Kleinfelter syndrome? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a geneticist, but from my understanding and my research, and from this article, Kleinfelter syndrome is where a live male human birth, so baby boy, is born with an extra chromosome. So they will have XXY as their chromosome thing, um, karyotype rather than an X and a Y chromosome, I think. Some people have written articles and blog posts and stuff online saying that women have Kleinfelter syndrome as well. The actual name of the condition equivalent in a female human being, as I understand it, is Turner syndrome. <laughs> where instead of having a 2x karyotype, I know this isn't my field and you guys are wondering why the f I'm talking about double x karyotypes, bear with me. Kleinfelter syndrome does have physical characteristics in a lot of men. A lot of people with Kleinfelter <clears throat> have learning issues and development issues as children, uh, you can have longer arms and legs than the rest of your family, you can be taller than the rest of your family, uh, you can have um, what they sort of refer to as enlarged breast tissue, so you basically have sort of more fatty tissue around your chest. Uh, you might have smaller uh, sex organs than is uh, expected, uh, and you may have fertility issues. In fact, a lot of people with Kleinfelter have fertility issues, and it's quite common, it affects between 1 in 500 and 1 in 800 people, depending where you are in the world. In the UK it's something like 1 in 660 people has Kleinfelter syndrome. Uh, so it's pretty damn common, it's a really common genetic um, <clears throat> thing that happens. Uh, and it, it, it's caused by all sorts of fun and complex genetic stuff that I've been enjoying reading about but that don't really belong in this video. So the, the big takeaway that everybody has had from this article <clears throat> is this quote where we're told that this person may well be non-binary and that has caused all kinds of hell on the internet because people do not like the idea uh, of non-binary as a concept existing in the past. But of course we know from my video on intersex people that different concepts of sex and gender have always existed because people with Kleinfelter and intersex people uh, have always existed and people who don't feel that they fit the masculine feminine binary have always existed. That's just a part of the human condition. Why am I making this video? I'm making this video partly because this is a recent relevant discussion and I have opinions on it, as an archaeologist and as a Viking Age researcher. I'm not an expert. I cannot claim expertise in this field from any point of view. However, my experience and my research means I might be able to help some of you guys who are feeling confused by all of this. 
So what do we have in this grave? Let's take a quick look. Well, what we've got here is an inhumation, a burial of a body rather than a cremation of ashes. It's an adult human. <clears throat> Through genetic testing and through sampling by Moylan and et al, we're led to believe quite convincingly that this is probably a man with Kleinfelter syndrome, a biological human man. Mm. The burial contains a number of artifacts. We have a sword, blade, without hilt, without pommel, uh, and without crossguard. We have this, the, the blade of a sword. Um, we have some other personal items. We have uh, tortoise brooches, domed brooches, suggesting that the burial, uh, this person was buried wearing an apron dress, as I mentioned. We've got a chain distributor, a very attractive one, which I believe is gold, which again suggests that this person was buried wearing quote unquote women's clothing. This is a thing that you often see hanging here, holding chains with tools and keys and what have you, a chatelaine if you like, like this later version. Um, we have a knife <clears throat> and we have a sickle, which everybody seems to forget, but this person was buried with a sickle blade across the neck, right across here. So what does all of this mean? I don't know. Nobody knows. We do not know. None of you watching this video right now, even if you are one of the original excavating archaeologists, and you're probably not because this was dug up in 1968, even if you are a world expert in the subject, you do not know what this grave means. And that's very, very important because all of the articles that you're reading have clickbait titles, like this thousand-year-old Viking grave contains a non-binary person. That is clickbait, and that's designed to get your attention, and that is how things work. That's how YouTube works. That's why you probably clicked on my video, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, right? It's because you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail, and you went, huh, interesting, tell me more. Or, who the F is this guy? I'm going to find out, and I'm going to write him a horrible comment, which I'll just delete. This grave does tell us some things. This tells us that this is a Viking Age grave. This tells us that this person is wearing at least semi-Norse-style clothing. Um, the chain distributor tends to be found a little more in the northeast of Scandinavia, which is interesting in itself, as far as I'm concerned. We have a little bit of textile underneath the brooches that suggests that they were attached to a dress, that this wasn't just a pair of brooches dumped on the body or given to the grave by a relative. There's textile fragments on the backs of the, of the, uh, of the brooches, which, you know, they were attached to something when they went into that grave, and it's probably clothing. The sword, without a hilt and without a pommel, is interesting. Is that just uh, a sword blade as a symbol of status? Is it a gift from a family member? Is the fact that it doesn't have its uh, furniture, its its cross guard and its 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 uh, its hilt? And I normally have a shield and sword behind me. And I haven't put them up. I'm doing my set dressing today. I do apologise. Do, does that suggest that this wasn't this person's sword, or this was an incomplete commission? It's interesting to speculate, but we don't know. I think that the fact this person had Kleinfelter syndrome is very interesting. I think it's amazing that we can actually tell that from what little material we had left. You know, a thousand year old set of bones. What we cannot do is say for sure this person was non-binary. Because non-binary is a personal choice that very often comes after a lot of soul searching that a person makes in order to feel comfortable in their own body and in society. And we can't give that to this person because that could be wrong. We can never ever do that, okay? We, can, we cannot do that. I was taught in my first year of my undergraduate degree, literally in Archaeology 101, we do not gender skeletons. We sex skeletons. And we often get it wrong. So the fact that we can sex this skeleton quite confidently means nothing in terms of their gender identity. But we can't do that to this person. And make no mistake, we would be doing that to them, 
not for them or with them. We would be doing something to this person, this dead person who has been dead for a thousand plus years, right? We don't know if this person was non-binary. This person with Kleinfelter may have been deeply misunderstood. They almost certainly didn't have the kind of developmental support that people can enjoy now uh, through things like the Kleinfelder Syndrome Association and through you know, national health services. They may well have been abused, they may well have been um, assigned a gender they were uncomfortable with and didn't feel that they had the power or the right to go against. And we have to be really, really careful with stuff like this, because if we say this is a non-binary Viking, oh, yeah, you, I mean, we have zero evidence that this person was a Vikinger and ever went Viking, but this Viking Age person may well have been non-binary. Kleinfelter syndrome is a relatively newly discovered syndrome, obviously, because genetics is a new subject. They may have been seen as, to use a very inappropriate word that you do not use today to describe a human being, an hermaphrodite. Uh, which is also related to words for mystic and wizard, possibly. So this person may, <laughs> because of their physical traits not being entirely recognised as masculine, they may have had very broad hips, enlarged breast tissue, uh, smaller sex organs, they may have had developmental and learning issues, this person may have been assigned a role in society, not of their own choosing. Yeah, burial with a sword blade suggests a position of authority and a position of respect in society. So, I'm not saying that this person was, you know, cast out of society or anything like that, but the decision may not have been theirs. All of this is conjecture. Because everything to do with this person's life is conjecture, because we don't have a biography of them. We don't have their autobiography in the grave with them. We don't know. We have no idea why this person was a. Buried with a sword blade, without its fittings. B. Apparently, a human male with Kleinfelter syndrome buried in a dress. C. And this is the most intriguing part of the entire grave assemblage for me, regardless of any of the genetic stuff. Buried with a whacking great sickle blade around their neck. You see that? You see that thing? That's a sickle blade. That's right around their throat. I want to know what that means. I already know that sword blades generally are a status symbol, whether it's an iron weaving sword or an iron killing sword. It's a symbol of some kind of status. Why is there a sickle around their neck? Why is that there? What does that mean? Because I'm very, very intrigued by that. And it's kind of being ignored, and that seems like a shame to me. Because yes, this person's genetic makeup is fascinating, and the fact that they have uh, a syndrome that we can now identify, and that has a name, and that we know how it affects people, and we know what it does to a human body, is amazing. A thousand years later, we have given this person, honestly, information that may have been really useful to them and their families a thousand years ago, and may have completely changed the way that they lived. But my archaeology brain is saying, yeah, but what about that blade? Tell me more. Why is there a sickle there? Is that a religious thing? Is it a ritual thing? Ha ha ha, everything's ritual. Why has this person been buried with a sickle blade around their neck? In fact, I think it was a full sickle. I think it had rivets and a handle. Why is that there? What does that mean? Is that something to do with religious practice? Is that for cutting uh, branches from trees for use in religious ceremonies? There's some theorising that flicking blood at people with a branch was part of some Old Norse religion. Could this person have had some plant material buried with them that's now lost that refers to their position as a priest or priestess or functionary of some kind in Norse religion? Is that related to their gender identity and their sexual identity? That is very fascinating if so, but I think it's a shame that this artefact is largely being ignored because I think it will help us paint a broader, more detailed as well, picture of this person in their life.
Jimmy, is this person a non-binary Viking? Well, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. We do not know. Society does not know. Academia does not know. This one article by the geneticists who did the experiment says they may well have been non-binary, but non-binary is a very nuanced term, and it refers to gender. And we do not assign gender to dead people. That's not our job. We haven't got a right to do that. We do not have the right to tell dead people what their gender identity was. We can interpret and we can make educated guesses and we can try to understand, but for this one, and honestly, out of respect for this person who may have had a difficult life, I think we should stick to maybe. Because saying yes or no and getting into arguments on the internet about all of this and using this person as a tool or a weapon in those arguments is hugely disrespectful to them. So, for now, yeah, we may have a non-binary Viking Age person, and it appears that they had a position of some respect and authority in society, which I think is awesome. And this grave is very, very interesting. We do have another grave from the south of England that is earlier, it's pre-Viking, I believe, um, of uh, an Anglo-Saxon, what appears to be biologically male skeleton, buried in uh, female clothing, and I would love to see a similar genetic um, study on that person. <laughs> to see if they also had Kleinfelters, and see if that is something that we can kind of see as uh, a trend, maybe, for people with Kleinfelters being seen as other, not necessarily masculine, not necessarily feminine, but being assigned a gender, uh, as we know happened later in history. We know that people in the medieval and early modern periods who identified uh, as non-binary or who were intersex were assigned a gender role in society, and it's possible that this is what has happened here. Which is why I think we have to be careful, because we don't know if this was their choice. And we never will. As Professor Chris Mee of the University of Liverpool used to tell us all the time, we just don't know. And being able to say that as an academic is essential. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh Bye for now. Stop, stop.